Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cynic Alex, and surprise, surprise, we got the patch notes for the Professor X and Kitty Pride update, the sort of Quiet Council update, they're calling it, a day early. And patch notes a day early doesn't always mean this, but in this case, the update is also a day early. So I know it's confusing for a lot of players who are used to a very consistent routine from Marvel Future Fight, myself included, but the update is going to be happening tonight. It's going to be happening at 7 p.m. Pacific time for those of you on the West Coast. And then it's going to be 10 p.m. Eastern time for those of you on the East Coast. And then it's going to be spilling over into Tuesday morning, into Tuesday afternoon for everybody uh, Europe into Asia. Okay, so it's literally 24 hours earlier than it normally is because these updates normally happen on a Tuesday night. Okay, so very strange. But it is what it is. We, I think we've had like one or two updates in the history of the game being uh, a day early, to be honest with you. So this is not completely uncharted territory, but very unusual waters. And I'll be live on YouTube to live stream my reaction to the Professor X Kitty Pride bump ups. So, yeah, let's get into it here. It's interesting. There's a lot to talk about. There's a lot to speculate on as well. So buckle up. For those of you who uh, want all the juicy drama on the, the ongoings of Marvel Future Fight. So yeah, Professor X getting a uh, sort of pimped out Hellfire Gala uniform that we sort of saw in the... We, we saw basically the whole thing in the, uh, in the sneak peek. His upgrades don't look too drastic, but again, we'll have to wait and see. He seems to be getting a, a pretty decent bump on his Tier 3. He's getting a V-pad now on his first skill. They moved the V-pad away from 5 onto 1. Uh, and then he's getting a 20% heal here. Uh, I think he already had a heal. I think they just kind of moved it around. He has a 1% accumulation. Honestly, his kit seems very PvE. So for those of you worried that he would be PvP, he's not. He does have guard break immunity on his uniform effect, which is very good because I believe he got guard broken from time to time with his old kit. Um, but the guard break immunity does not mean that he's for PvP. He doesn't have anything else that makes him look PvP. And to be honest, his kit is fairly standard, right? Healing and Frenzy on this skill, um, you know, uh, damage damage proc on this skill, the 50% increase for one attacks, and then the Frenzy buff on the fifth skill with Invincibility. Very straightforward kit here. Uh, Kitty, on the other hand, while her kit is very similar to Professor X's in the sense that she has Accumulation on 5, she has a Frenzy buff, and she has a 20% heal, uh, she seems worse. She seems quite a bit worse than Professor X, at least on paper. I don't want to panic too much about this, um, but on paper, her kit doesn't seem to be upgraded very much, which is actually really important because she's so bad right now. And Tier 3 doesn't actually do that much for a character. You also need to rework the character in some sort of meaningful way otherwise. Um, what's particularly upsetting for a lot of players for Kitty is her uniform effect. Keep in mind, this is the character's first uniform. So this is her basically, you know, this is the de facto kit for her. And it's when hit, she gets invisibility and ignore targeting for five seconds. Ignore targeting just means that you can't hit her, right? So she's invisible for five seconds every 20 seconds because the cooldown is 20 seconds. For a character that can phase through anything, this is a pretty shit way of illustrating that. Now, I know you can't have the invisibility on a five second timer and then have the cooldown five seconds because then she would literally never take damage from any boss ever. Like, I understand that, but this should be like 10 seconds, you know, or like I'd, I'd say 15 seconds at most, at most, because then you could argue that for one third of the fight, she's invisible. That's pretty decent, right? That's pretty decent. But 20 seconds is honestly just way too high. And then 100% uh, damage immunity for one second. Again, if this refreshes for the five full seconds, that's okay. But you also have to, again, consider the fact that the invisibility means the boss is not going to hit her anyways. So why are they giving her immunity? I guess in case there's like hazards around the arena, like poison, clouds, or tornadoes, I guess. But yeah, the 20 second cooldown is really what's killing a lot of people's hype for Kitty. And then the fact that the rest of her kit just seems like a copy paste. It literally seems like a copy paste of Professor X's. The accumulation is the same and it's in the same skill. The healing is the same in the same skill. Uh, and then her passives are essentially the same. So, yeah, I don't know. Her leadership is essentially the same. Uh, yeah, not like on paper. This does not look like a good update so far to, to be to be perfectly honest with you. Um, and then Kitty's getting her tier three. 
she uh, jumps up in the air and then slashes you a bunch of times with swords uh, because she's a pirate now. And that's it. Yep. And her tier three just looks fine. Whatever. Uh, she gets a damage proc. She gets uh, ignore dodge and invincibility. Because the skill has a damage proc, it's probably going to hit really hard. So she's probably going to have a very high damage um, tier three. And it's called Phantom Strike, which is pretty cool. I mean, her skills do have kind of pirate themes. You know, Captain's Command. Uh, Dragonfire Slice, Queen's Blade, Marauder Slash. So we'll see if those are cool looking skills or not. It's kind of unclear right now. Uh, for Professor X getting his tier four, we are sort of going away now from the copy paste, copy paste of Ant Man and Shadow Shell and a couple of others where it was just like increase your attack and then increase your attack again. Woo, very cool. So he's getting elemental damage increase by, by up to 75%. And then this skill also deals damage. It has a mind damage proc, or not proc, but like a mind damage attack percentage of 180%. So it's cool, in my opinion. Again, this might be a little bit of a reach for some players, but remember Magneto's tier four also does damage. So having Magneto and Professor X have similar tier fours in a way is kind of like a cute homage back to uh, their, their relationship, right? As sort of the leaders of the mutant race. So I, I kind of like this. Uh, the elemental damage should be very good. It also should make him a bit more flexible with his build. We'll see if he's proc friendly, but if he's proc friendly, then, you know, you have a lot of options. But even if he's not proc friendly, you're not necessarily stuck using a judgment because uh, that elemental damage, sort of like uh, Thor, will allow you to also use potentially a rage CTP. So, yeah, that's that's it for Professor X. For the artifacts that they're getting, Professor X increases his mind damage by 30% of his mind resist, very similar to Thor's, except obviously Thor is lightning in, in place of mind. Um, but then it, it has an increased damage dealt to alien characters. This is a bit of a bummer. I saw some people reacting to this. Why doesn't it just increase damage to all supervillains? Because we don't have any alien heroes that you're dealing lots of damage to and that you're attacking in any sort of content. So it's kind of red redundant and I agree. But yeah, it kind of it is what it is. The alien tag means that this uh, artifact will increase his damage versus null versus gore, uh, obviously versus any aliens that you're using in PvP. If for whatever sick twisted reason you're using Professor X in PvP, um, and then it will also work against the Frost Beast. So I don't know if it's going to work against Surtur, but it should work against the Frost Beast for ABX. Not that we necessarily need that because we have Tier Four Iron Man, but I digress. Uh, and then kitties is increased damage to villains and decreased damage received from villains. Just a pretty straightforward artifact. I honestly feel like if, if I'm, I'm going off script here and giving my opinion, uh, lately the creativity has been on zero for skill effects and artifact effects. Um, the animations are still pretty good now and then. Like Chasm had really cool effects. Ant-Man had really cool effects. It's, it's a bit hit and miss, you know, like on the one hand, they gave Ant-Man some, some really cool new skills. Uh, and they gave Chasm some really cool skills. On the other hand, they just recycled all of Shadow Shell's skills. So they basically did nothing new for Shadow Shell, which was really disappointing. And they actually copied and pasted Ant-Man's, uh, part of Ant-Man's animation anyways, where he's punching on the fifth skill. They copied and pasted that over to Giant Man on the transcended skill with Wasp. Again, there's going to be some overlap because these characters are sort of like protégés of one another, like, you know, Hank, Tot, Scott. So, of course, there's going to be some overlap there. But at the same time, uh, when it comes to the artifacts, these are feeling very like it feels like they've sort of just they, they, they've checked out, right? They like, OK, we, we created like 50 unique artifacts. Now we're just going to copy and paste for the remaining 200 characters. And that's it. So you're going to end up with a lot of overlap. And I'm a little bit disappointed in that. I, I still think they can do a lot of cool, unique things with artifacts without making them too overpowered or too necessary. The one thing I will say is that none of the artifacts lately have been necessary for a character's kit. So that is kind of an important thing to remember. Um, we don't want to see artifacts like Colossus, where it's like the healing of the character is locked behind the artifact and the character sucks ass without the artifact, right? Not that there's anything wrong with sucking ass. Uh, but yeah, so, we, so you sort of take the good with the bad uh, and we're not getting the bad, so I guess we're not getting the good. I don't know, but yeah, it, it seems a bit um, uninspired at this point. Uh, and then they're changing the store loyalty points. So what this essentially means is that when you spend money, you have different tiers of loyalty points. This is the sort of the permanent loyalty point reward system. And if we go over to the shop, I can just show you what it looks like right now. Uh, this 
So this is the Quantumanium one, but where's the regular one? This is the regular one. So this is the regular one right now. And when you spend crystals, right, you, you get uh, different rewards here on that track. So they're basically improving the rewards, I would say pretty substantially. They're adding an extra tier of crystals, and then they're adding tier three materials and a Titan, like a book selector and an Odin's blessing chest. These are sort of more relevant rewards to players who are going to be spending money to try to catch up rather than like 50 bios and a mega mastery ticket and like a random six star Uru, right? Like a lot of this stuff is kind of just pointless. This is obviously more focused. The new the new rewards anyways are more focused on like character building and, and roster building. But anyways, this is only for people who spend money. And that's what I want to spend the rest of the video talking about because that's the end of the patch notes. Okay, so you're like, wow, like this is a this is a very bare bones mid month update. And you'd be absolutely right to feel that way. It is very bare bones. This is probably the smallest uh, mid month update we've ever gotten. Maybe maybe we got one that was smaller, right? It was just literally just the two uniforms uh, and, and, the, and nothing else, like no loyalty point, like quality of life sort of thing. But keeping on the idea of only upgrading the game for spending players, I want to take you guys now through a list of all of the events announced for this update because believe it or not we're getting absolutely rammed with events for this update and some of them are good don't get me wrong but some of them are a little telling if you would so first up is the professor x hero package for those of you wondering if you wanted to build up professor x it's 4,500 crystals. This is the same price that it was. Ba basically, this is the same price that it was for the danger room, except you're not getting the extra danger room rewards, but it's that's gone now. That ship has long since sailed, so you can't really do anything about that. But this is the same price that these characters were sold for last year during the anniversary, and I believe during Black Friday. So it's not like they're... They're not like they're upselling Professor X, but yeah, it's 4,500 crystals and you get a tier two Professor X right away. So you don't even have to worry about using tickets on him, mega rank up tickets, etc. You can just start building him to tier three. And then if you want tier four, uh, you would just have to get the uniform and then, you know, use tickets on the uniform because you can't farm his bios. Like it's impossible to farm his bios, right? Okay, so that's cool. Then they have a new pack. Check this out. Brand new pack, tier three and transcended upgrade pack. I'm not sure if they've ever released this one before. I don't know if they have, but it is very good value. A thousand crystals, a tier two selector, a tier three mega ticket. So this will take any, I believe, any tier two ticket, um, any or sorry, <laughs> tier two ticket, any tier two character, uh, all the way to tier three, or maybe it'll take a one star character up to tier three. I can't remember. But then they also have a transcended selector, which will take a like a tier two shadow shell up to transcended, right? Completely max that out. So this is this is very good value here for, for players who are trying to catch up and really max out their roster. Really cool stuff. Then we have something we've, for sure, we've never seen this before. So the last one I was like, eh, I'm like 60, 70% sure I've never seen that pack before. I've never seen this pack before. In all, in all eight years of playing this game, almost, I've never seen this pack before. The Crystal Relay Pack. So this is a Crystal Relay with very very competitive crystal amounts, right? 1800 crystals for $10 US is very good. Because uh, for Canadians, it'll be like $13, $14 for 1800 crystals. So that's the highest it's ever been. The crystal, the price per dollar ratio, right? Uh, and then five, and then if you buy that, you can, you're, in, you're allowed to buy this one, which is 5,500 crystals for 30 US, which again is the highest price. It's the highest crystal per dollar value outside of the anniversary and Black Friday where they double the amount. And honestly, it's probably still pretty close in value. And then if you buy this one, you can buy this one, which is almost 10,000 crystals for $50. This is insane value. I wonder why they're doing this. Uh, and then we have the art book comic card chest pack. Again, I think this is the first time they've ever released this uh, this event, this, this sort of like this sale. I'm not advertising these, by the way, to, to try to FOMO you into buying them. I'm just flabbergasted at how much effort is clearly going into the marketing versus anything else, right? Like they literally have more events than they have changed skills for the characters that are getting new uniforms. <laughs> it's absolute madness, you know? It's 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 crazy. It's crazy. Anyways, uh, the art book comic card chest, yeah, it seems pretty bad unless you desperately need pre like random premium cards because you get three. You basically get four premium cards for a hundred dollars which if in that sense it's good value good value um but yeah 
you get a random, by the way, it's a random art book card. You don't get to choose. So they're sort of positioning this sale as like finish your art book um, uh, collection. And funny enough, if you guys remember, uh, <laughs> I'm their target audience on this one, guys. I have one f fucking card left. But I'm certainly not going to be buying that because I know there's a 99% chance, even though there's actually only an 80% chance, there's actually a 99% chance that I won't pull the card that I need. So yeah, not going to buy this until it's a, it's a, a selector. Uh, it's a little bit misleading as well with the marketing because this, you know, it's not even the, yeah, see, it's not even the same image. Anyways, I'm not even going to talk about that. Uh, and then this is the one that really blew my socks off. And this is the one that made me think like, hey, are they trying to cash out on the game? Uh, they're bringing back the one to six star artifact chest. Yeah. So just, just for those of you keeping track at home, last year they had this event once. Okay. This, since Black Friday, they, this is the second time they're going to have this event. So in the span of three months, they're running this event twice versus 12 months the last year once like once over the course of 12 months versus now twice over the course of three months. That's a that's a very large frequency increase, okay? So yeah, I mean, am I tempted to do this even though I just spent tokens getting his four-star artifact? Yeah, I am kind of tempted to do this, but I'm also kind of terrified what this means, you know? I, I'm not trying to, listen, I'm not trying to say that the game is like gonna shut down tomorrow or like next week or whatever. That's not what I'm saying. Like, I think the game still has like a, a year or two legs left, right? Uh, a year if they keep going down this like very lazy copy paste formula. And then two plus years if they actually put more effort in like they did in 2021. And if the MCU picks up. The MCU kind of dragging its balls through glass is also hurting this game along with hurting all of the other Marvel games. But honestly... Uh, if I go on a tangent just a little bit here, mobile game retention in general is on a, a pretty like damning decline. People are just not, people don't have the money, A, and B, they're just not as engaged by mobile games as they used to because there's just so much cash grab and there's so much, like there's just so many ripoffs, right? And so many like scams in, in gaming uh, and people are kind of just, it's not like they're, they're just kind of sick of it, to be honest. Um, and then we have the only event that does not need you to buy money buy money the only event that doesn't need you to spend money is the only event left it's the quiet council update celebration event so all uniforms are going to be on sale just an fyi it's 40 percent now in about a month or not in about in about two months it's going to be 50 percent off so you keep that in mind you can spend your crystals however you want but if you want to make the most of it and if you can actually hang on and play the game for the next two months without getting bored out of your mind and uninstalling i would say wait until the 50 percent off if you want to save more crystals especially if you have a lot of uniforms right if you if you want to buy a, like a volume of uniforms like five ten uniforms that that 50 that extra 10 percent adds up a lot right it's going to add up to an extra like one two uniforms overall we have the hero growth uh, bonus missions, the character bonus missions. We have the gold bonus mission with the five-star rank up ticket. We have the surprise gifts, which haven't been changed in like four years. Uh, we have artifact unequipped discount. We have the seven-day login event, which is going to give you 200 X gene selectors, which you cannot use for either Kitty or Professor X. And then a bunch of other stuff that is just oakily dokily. So yeah, um, it seems like they spent as little time as possible on these characters. And they spent as much time as possible on the spending events. You interpret that as you will. So, yeah. Hit me up in the comments down below. Let me know what you think. I'll be live tonight on YouTube. So, hit it up. We can, uh, you know, we can commiserate together. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for being here all these years. Not that I'm going anywhere. But, yeah. Smash the like button. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care.